Sunday School, November 14th, 2021. They were talking about trusting God to redeem your failures. And we're concluding a series based on the life of Abram and Sarai up until the time that Abram becomes Abraham. We'll be commenting on the story from verses found in Genesis 16 and 17. Now we know God has a plan. And we know sometimes it takes a long time for that plan to come to fruition. And we get impatient or we wonder, maybe there's something that I'm supposed to be doing to help that plan along, something I'm supposed to do to make this happen. And quite often when we do that, we just wind up causing more problems for ourselves. Well, Abram and Sarai had been waiting for a long time now to have all those descendants that God had promised, and they had none. So, in this week's lesson, we see that Sarai comes up with a plan to help make God's promise come true. But it was a plan of her own making and not what God had in mind. At this point in the story, Abram and Sarai had been in this area for at least 10 years. Abram was in his 80s, Sarai in her 70s. Sarai still had not born any children, though it had been promised of God that Abram would have many descendants. So, Sarai comes up with a plan, a practice that in that day and time was an acceptable practice in that culture. They would use a surrogate mother, a handmaiden. Sarai's handmaiden was Hagar the Egyptian, who had been with the family for some time now. So Abram and Sarai used Hagar as their surrogate mother, and she conceived. But then, realizing that she was to be the mother of Abram's heir, Hagar began to act with some degree of arrogance towards Sarai. And of course, Sarai began to be very upset about that, realizing that there was a problem with this. And so she comes to Abram complaining. And she comes to Abram saying, Okay, may the Lord judge between me and you. Now by disrespecting Sarai, Hagar lost her favorite status with Abram. Abram told Sarai to do and handle the matter however she saw best. So Sarai began to be very harsh to Hagar. Hagar ran away. But an angel spoke to her by a spring in the desert and told her to go back and reconcile to her mistress that she would have a son, that his name would be Ishmael, and that he would have many descendants also. So she returned to camp, they reconciled. The child was born, his name was Ishmael. And when he was born, Abram was 86 years old. Genesis 17 picks up 13 years later. Abram is 99, almost 100. The Lord appears to him, saying, I am the Lord God Almighty, live in my presence and be blameless. I will set up my covenant between me and you. I will multiply you greatly. He goes on to speak of many other promises, including those he's made before. Now, Abram falls down, worshiping God, as God speaks with him. And then, Abram laughs. Now, God knows that Abram is laughing, of course, but he continues saying, here's my covenant with you. You'll be the father of many nations. 
your name will no longer be Abram, your name will be Abraham, the father of many nations. I will make you fruitful. Make nations and kings come from you. And so, he also goes on to say that Sarai would no longer be called Sarai, but would be called Sarah, meaning a princess. Abram continued to laugh, and later on, hearing a very similar message, Sarah would also laugh. And God tells Abraham in this vision, you will have a son, you and Sarah will have a son, and you will call him Isaac, which means laughter. And of course, God knew Abraham's thoughts, wondering, what about Ishmael? And God tells him, I'm going to bless Ishmael too. I'm also going to make him the father of many nations. So in spite of their impatience and almost making a mess of things, God brings blessing. After a long wait, he keeps his promise to bless them with a child who would be the father of many nations. And also, Ishmael, born of Hagar, would also be blessed. So good came from all of these actions. God can take our mistakes and turn them to good. Own up to your mistakes and take responsibility for them. Confess to God. Ask his forgiveness. Ask for his help to carry on and live a better life in spite of the mistakes you've made. Finally, Believe in the redeeming power of God through Jesus Christ. It has sometimes been said that God is the God of second chances. Well, he is in fact the God of many opportunities and many chances. You have not messed up so bad that God will not forgive you or cannot help you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for continuing to be patient and forgiving. We pray, Lord, you would help us to really help us to get our lives together and live a good life for you.